Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is somebody ready for the word? Okay. Hallelujah. Let's go into the text. Only preaching today for 30 minutes. And then I have a lot of prophesying to do. Amen? Rapatashikataya. Hey. Woo! Let's read. For they have become priests without an oath. But he with an oath by him who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not relent that you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Also, there are many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he's also able to save to the uttermost. Somebody say, to the uttermost. So he's able, somebody says, able to save me to the uttermost. Jesus. Those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them for such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and has become higher than the heavens who who does not need daily as those high priests to offer sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the peoples for this he did once for all when he offered up himself hmm. Holy Spirit, <laughs> the hour has come for the veil to be removed from your people. A veil that has been there for many years. A veil that has prevented them from seeing what you are doing right now for them. A veil that has caused them to not understand what happened at the cross. And what is now happening at the throne. But there shall be a apocalypse. There shall be a unveiling. And there shall be a epignosis in your people. And for that I give you glory. In the name of Jesus. And the people said, Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I want to preach today. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you've got to understand that on the cross of Calvary, the Bible tells us from this scripture that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, was the high priest that came from heaven above. And when he came from heaven above, he came, hallelujah, in the order of Melchizedek. He did not come in the order of Aaron because in the order of Aaron, the priest would go and they would offer up a spotless lamb and the lamb would attack tone for the sins of Israel for what one year it will atone for what the transgressions of Israel for what one year and then it will have to be done the next year but the Bible says uh, that there was one that came from heaven he was uh, the spotless lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world and when he came he came and he did not only offer he did not offer a lamb he offered himself he was the lamb and when he offered himself he offered himself brabataya he offered himself for all of mankind now the interesting thing i want you to understand is that in the old covenant bakati when the lamb was offered the lamb was only offered for sin transgression and iniquity but it was not offered for abomination but the Bible says uh, that he was bruised. Hallelujah. He was bruised for what? Uh, our iniquities. Uh, he was what? 
wounded for our transgressions and with his stripes you were healed so what you've got to understand is this is that when jesus died what he offered his offering covered the sins of mankind the transgressions of mankind the iniquities of mankind and the what abominations of mankind it covered all of those but not only did it cover those it covered those once and for all so he is not a priest after the order of Aaron that every year has to offer in the holy of holies he is a priest after the order of Melchizedek but what you've got to understand is that what happened at the cross oh what happened at the cross was actually not enough yeah yeah, yeah. what happened at the cross was not enough to save mankind to the uttermost see because what happened at the cross saved mankind from their sin what happened at the cross saved mankind from the curse of the law what happened on the cross saved mankind's spirit from the power of the devil the bible says that we are translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son so what happened at the cross saved your spirit but what happened at the cross oh my god what happened at the cross did not heal your marriage what happened at the cross did not fix the relationship between you and your son what happened at the cross oh what happened at the cross did not fix your business but what happened at the cross what it did it fixed your sin problem it fixed the sickness problem it fixed oh the eternal salvation of man but you got to understand that even when Jesus when he finished the cross he was at the cross he was the savior of mankind but he had to step into the heavens and do another function called high priest and the Bible says in the function of high priest he's actually doing a job because this role that he has to play is necessary for you to be saved from almost to uttermost Jesus he says he is ever living to make intercession for you Jesus because the Bible says that your body is not saved when you got saved was your body born again was your body born again oh can I preach to somebody I said can I preach to somebody yes yes can i preach to somebody was your body saved no your body was not saved i said what your body was not saved now was your soul saved tell me did your emotions change the day you got born again did your mind change the day you got born again so the bible says that your body will be saved on the day of the rapture your body will be saved on the day of the resurrection of the dead and it also says that your soul is being saved that's why it says that you should renew your mind that your mind should be transformed by the word of god so your spirit is saved that happened instantly but your body is not saved and your soul ain't saved but so you have yourself a problem because uh, you are actually one third saved and the rest of the two you got to work on it now here's the significant of it because the bible tells us this it tells us that your body your body is what contains your blood and your blood flows in your body and the bible says the life of man is in the blood well there are devils that flow through the blood so when your body is not saved your blood is still connected to your mother your blood is still connected to your father your blood is still connected to your generations and so your blood is saved and the devils that live in your blood that flow through the bloodline so those bloodline devils when you say i'm born again they are not touched because they're in your body but i've come to tell somebody that because jesus is praying for you because is making intercession for you you can be saved to the Lord out of us 
You've come to serve to the Lord, all of us. You see, Jesus is a high priest. You know him as Savior, but you don't know him as high priest. He's actually in the heavens. And in the heavens, he actually is an intercessor. He's an intercessor. He's making intercession. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I've got to preach this to somebody. You see, because your revelation of Jesus is limited. He's limited to what he did for you. You don't understand what he's doing for you right now. But I've come to preach to somebody. I've come to open the veil for somebody. I've come to cause somebody to see into the realms of God to understand what Jesus is doing for you now. Now here's the thing. Your spirit is born again, but your body is connected. Because here's the thing. You... Before you got saved, you got connected to Danny. Danny has 36 demons. Are you with me? And you even get connected to Danny, you even marry Danny. So you married into the demons. So you're now saved. Are you with me? But the demons, they have entered your bloodline. And even your daughter has the demons. Hey, that is, those are what? Bloodline demons. You are seeing Danny. You are seeing Luther. You're seeing Samantha. Who you married. You're seeing Samantha on your daughter. And you say, oh my God, boy, that's bad. Oh, this is bad. So this is what? Bloodline. Now, your daughter is saved. But her spirit is saved. But her body ain't saved. And her blood ain't changed. Her blood ain't changed. From a mixture of Samantha and Luther's blood. The blood didn't change. It's the same blood. I said it's the same blood. When she got born again, the blood didn't change. Jesus. She still got her what? Her body. If she was five foot five before she got saved, she's still five foot five. Oh. I tell you, if she's brown skin, she's still brown skin. If I hear is nappy on her head, it's still nappy. It didn't get born again. I know some ladies would like to get some born again here, but you've got to wait until you get to heaven. You better walk them leaves. Shake Oh Lord. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. Hey. Hallelujah. I guarantee you that when you go to heaven, your hair will be just so fine. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. But I've come to preach to somebody to help you understand that Jesus has a function. And the function that he has is of a high priest who, after you have been born again in the spirit, he is praying. That's what the Bible says. It says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There's the salvation that you receive. And there's a salvation that you work for. The salvation that you receive is the salvation of your spirit. But then there's the salvation of your soul. Your heart is still wounded over what happened as a child. Your soul is still wounded. You're born again, but your soul is still wounded. With what happened, you got an injury in your soul. But you're saved. Ah, I'm not helping somebody here. I said you're saved. So, in order for you to be saved to the uttermost, that means your spirit is saved, but guess what? Your emotions are not saved. Jeez. Some of you can say, Bishop, my spirit is saved, but I can tell you, oh Lord, I'll tell you, I can tell you, my tongue is not saved. Shh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hallelujah. For some of you, your spirit is saved. Can I preach like I feel it? Can I preach like the Lord is telling me? For some of you, your spirit is saved, but your private part is definitely unsaved. 
Oh, it is what unsaved, but your spirit is saved. It is what unsaved. Some of you, your spirit is saved, but your life is what unsaved. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you say, Bishop, I am saved, but I can tell you for sure my bank account is not saved. Oh Lord. So Jesus is in heaven to pray that not only your spirit be saved, but every part of you, every part of your life that needs to be saved, get saved. So you get saved to the what? Uttermost. So what you are having, you are having believers who are only one third saved. Nothing else is saved. Romantic life, some of you, romantic life needs salvation. This is the salvation of romance. Hey, how many can say, I need romantic salvation? You see, so there is romantic salvation. There is financial salvation. There is emotional salvation. Oh, there is broken heart salvation. Are you with me? There is relationship salvation. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave you spiritual salvation. He gave you healing in your body. But he did not give you romantic salvation. So when you can access romantic salvation, you got to connect with the prior priestly ministry of Jesus. Ooh. is there somebody hallelujah is there somebody grasping what I'm saying now that is why the church is so defeated because you see, I am saved by redemption you have been redeemed but guess what your romantic life wasn't redeemed So you need to understand that you need to tap into the salvation, the total salvation package. And the total salvation package of Jesus is Jesus as high priest. Jesus. So you have not even considered, you have said, Jesus my high priest. Hey, Jesus my priest. You see, I know you need to understand you are interceding. But Jesus is interceding. And you now need to learn how to connect with Jesus' intercession. Because Jesus' prayers for you get answered. Jesus. Oh my God, I've got to preach to somebody. You see, but you need to now know how to, <laughs> how to connect with Jesus' prayers for you. Now, how did you connect with Jesus dying on the cross for you? You connected what? With your mouth. Jesus. You said, Jesus, I acknowledge you died for me. I make you my Lord and my Savior. And you did, and all of a sudden, what happened? Your spirit changed. Now, if you did not know Jesus died for your sins, you couldn't have connected. Now, if you don't know Jesus is praying for you to be saved to the uttermost. See, so some of you right now, you should be start thinking, hmm, hey. My God. Hmm. <laughs> you start counting the areas of your life that are not saved. She father. Right now, everybody should start counting. Wait. These are the areas of my life that definitely require salvation. Jesus. Oh, is somebody counting in this place? I said, is somebody counting in this place? Oh, hallelujah. We're in these areas. Jesus is praying. Now, I want you to turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Okay, find it for me. Hebrews 4. If, oh my God. Oh, let's go back. While you're finding it, go back to the scripture before this. The, the slide before this. Let me show you something. Oh, hallelujah. He says, okay, the slide after that. Hallelujah. He says, therefore, he's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. So, you have to come to God through him then after you come through him, there's something additional that he does for you. 
called saved to the uttermost. <laughs> so you need to come to God through him first. So he died for you to come to God through him. Then after you come to God through him, then you get open to what? Uttermost. So what's happening, you have a lot of believers who don't know this, therefore they are what? Almost. Hey, about that. Hey, hey, hey. Can I preach? I said, can I preach to somebody? Oh, hallelujah. So they're what? Almost. Because if you don't tap this, he says, since he lives to make intercession for them in the areas where they need to be saved. So he is your savior from your sins. And he's actually saving you right now. Jesus. Hey, Katabasa. Somebody say, I get it. Somebody say, I get it. Somebody say, I get it. Okay. Hallelujah. Next slide. Hallelujah. And then go to Hebrews chapter 4. Yes. Now, Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4. I want you to go right down. Hallelujah. Okay, right to the end. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Hallelujah. I love the scripture. Somebody say, I'm getting revelation today. For verse 16. Hallelujah. He says, well, let's go to verse 14. Because I need to give you some context. Somebody say some context. It's a sin that we have. <laughs> a great high priest. That's, it is a sin that we have a savior. Okay. Because this is a different role. Hi, yeah, yeah. Are you with me? It's like you need to understand that it's like my wife. She plays different roles in my life. Are you with me? When she was up with the mic just now, she wasn't playing bishop's wife. She was playing the role of what? Prophetess. Are you with me? So she's a wife, that's one role. She's a prophetess, that's another role. Are you with me? So Jesus is not just savior. He's also what? A great high priest. My God. Somebody say, my eyes are open today. Don't your neighbor say, you have missed this. And that's why you've stayed almost. Jesus. It's a sin that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the son of God. He says, let us hold fast our profession. Hmm. Now, a profession is a confession that becomes so part of you it is now your profession. <laughs> what is a profession? A profession is somebody says, I am a doctor. I am a bishop. I am a consultant. I was me. I am a pastor. I am an agronomist. I am a doctor. That's called profession. Now for some of you, your confession ah, is you confess it every Sunday. It is not your profession. Jesus. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. You see, your confession is not your profession. Your profession is not to grumble. Your profession is not to say what is. Your profession is not to say what, how you're feeling. Your profession is not your declaration. But it says, because we have a high priest who is passed into the heavens, your declaration must now become your profession. <laughs> oh my, can I preach to somebody? Hey, follow me. Can I preach to somebody? I say, can I preach to somebody? He says, saying then that we have a high priest that is passing to the heavens, Jesus Christ, let us hold fast. The word hold fast means katabalano. It means to hold fast with your life. It means to hold with your life. Kata means to hold. Balono with everything you have. It means katalabano. Hold fast. That means you hold it. You need to hold fast. So when you're in debt, you confess. I'm a millionaire in the making. When you're in deep, when you're sick, diseases in your body, you confess I'm healed. Or when you have a romantic, you're in a romantic wilderness, you look at your bed and you say, bed, one day I 
prophesy. I prophesy to the bed. I shall have, hallelujah, my God partner there in the name of Jesus. And when you're looking at your partner, and your partner is not what you think they should be, or what God told you they will be, you will prophesy in your shower and say, partner, I prophesy, I speak to you, because my prophecy is my declaration, and my declaration is my profession, I'm going to preach to somebody, shakata shivra papa safata hey, hey, so this is what, I ain't seen the person yet, I ain't seen it, let me explain I met a pastor from UK, one of the prominent pastors in the UK, and we met at a Morris Taylor conference, and he told me, he said how he and his wife were praying for the foot of the womb, and they did not have no success. He said because they told that his wife, there's no way she could bear children. He says what they did, he said, he said, honey, this is what we're going to do. Every time we eat at the dinner table, we're going to set for our two sons. La bra bra batasa. Hey, can I prophesy to somebody? He says we're going to set for our two sons. We're going to set it. He said, Bishop, after 18 months of doing it, my wife became pregnant, and I have two sons. Hey, that is my position became my what profession. So some of you, you waver too quick. You see, because it is not your profession. You say, I have been saying this thing, Bishop, for two days, and I see nothing change yet. I am frustrated. I have been declaring now for 24 hours, and nothing ain't changed. It took you 40 years to get into the problem that you did. And you expect... 24 hours of statements to reverse 40 years of damage? Shut up, I am. What is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I said, what is wrong with you? Oh my God. Let's move to the next scripture. He says, this is my favorite part of the scripture. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That means you have a high priest who knows what it's like to be where you are. Jesus. So the one who is praying for you has suffered where you suffer. That's why he is a great high priest because he's walked on the earth. He doesn't understand. The Holy Ghost is not your high priest. Because the Holy Ghost has never been in your shoes. Jesus. The heavenly father is not your high priest because he's never been in your shoes. He doesn't know what it's like to be a man. But Jesus is your high priest. Can I preach to somebody? Oh my God. Oh my God. He's your high priest. Because he knows what it's like to be betrayed. He knows what it's like to be lied on. He knows what it's like to be slapped. He knows what it's like to be abused. He knows what it's like to not have money. Oh, can I push this thing? He said, for we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us, we are yet without sin. So, part of Jesus' process to become high priest, he had to face every temptation and test that a human being can face. So, there's nothing you have gone through that Jesus has not tasted. That the demon responsible for it did not come. So during Jesus' earthly life, every type of demon came to him. So he knows you. How oh, can I preach? I said he knows you. Jesus. Who? Oh. But was in all points tempted like we swear, yet without sin. Next one. Let us therefore, some say therefore, come boldly 
to the throne of grace. So the high priestly ministry of Jesus releases grace on you for other areas of your life to be saved. When you got born again, the grace to be saved from sin was released. But there's another grace that you need. The grace to be happily married. The grace to have all your debts paid. The grace to have some peace in your house. The grace to have your children working with God. The grace to have some financial deliverance. That is a grace that you need. Jesus. Oh. Say come boldly. That what? That we may obtain mercy, kindness to the undeserved, and find what? Grace to help in the time of need. Now, next service, I'm going to preach to you how to tap and connect with the high priestly ministry of Jesus. How to homaglolio. That's the word. Homaglolio. That's a Greek word. That is how you connect with that's how you receive because do you know that Jesus has died for the whole world but many have not received salvation so the fact that there is salvation doesn't mean they're going to receive it so the fact that Jesus is praying for you doesn't mean they're going to receive any of his prayers you got to know how to connect with it so today the Lord told me to release on some people salvation so today I came with grace from Jesus for other areas of your life to be saved. Jesus. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I said I came, hallelujah. I came without a knowing. Hallelujah. To see somebody saved to the uttermost. Someone's emotional life needs to be saved. You get depressed, but you're going to be saved to the uttermost. Somebody's loins need to be saved. You get bombarded by devils, but you're going to be saved to the uttermost. Somebody's love needs to be saved, but you've been bombarded by devils, but you're going to be saved to the uttermost. So much children need to be saved. So much hope needs to be saved. So much finances need to be saved. But you're going to be saved to the uttermost because grace Grace. So there's grace. It is the grace that saves you. But you need to know how to connect with the high priestly grace of Jesus. Because if you don't connect, you will be almost. You will only receive what he died on the cross. And you will not receive what he's doing in heaven for you. (laughs) There's a statement. He says, he ever liveth. Which means, that is his purpose there. When he say, he ever liveth to play football. He ever liveth to cook. That's every waking moment is to cook. So Jesus' every waking moment is to intercede that somebody in his church receives grace to be saved to the uttermost. Never wonder whether he cares. Not only does he care, he knows. He knows. He knows. But you now have to learn how to do what? Receive from him. You had to learn how to get saved. Did Jesus die for you to get filled with the Holy Ghost? I did not get filled with the Holy Ghost immediately. I was one of those who took me a long time to get filled with the Holy Ghost. My wife got filled with the Holy Ghost quickly. I was a hard case. Jesus. 
I was one of the hard cases. Because I was too cerebral. It took me about two to three months to lift my hand in church. And before I did, I looked to see who was watching me when I lifted on my hand. Like people were studying whether I lifted my hand in church. Jesus, my God. And when I went to be filled with the Holy Ghost, everybody got filled except me. Everybody got filled except me. Because there was too much in my head. Everybody got filled. So me, it took a long time until I learned how to receive the Holy Ghost. So I saw my friends. And then you see the Holy Ghost. I'm thinking, what is the problem? What is the problem? Then they prayed for me to get healing. I didn't receive nothing. But I studied healing and eventually I received healing. So I had to learn how to do what? Receive it. So you have to study how to receive the uttermost grace. (laughs) Somebody say uttermost. Somebody say I'm moving from almost to uttermost. You see people who don't know this they are in conditions. They're just praying for Jesus Christ to come or they go to heaven. They say, Father, let's take me home because you have saved my soul. But they don't know there is an other aspect of Jesus yeah. which is uttermost. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Am I helping somebody here? Yes. So you need to know this. Once you get to know him, ay, 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 in this way, you start seeing some miracles, huh? And this is when people will say, boy, it looks like I'm going to join you in church. Because people in the world, when you say they're saved, they say, okay, yes, you're saved. We see you ain't doing the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. It's a great thing when Jesus saved my soul. They say, okay, we see that you're not doing those things. But when you get saved to the uttermost, the song changes. The things I never had, I have them right now. The things I never had, I have them right now. The man I never had, I have him right now. The business I never had, I have him right now. The relationship I never had, I have it right now. It's a great day when Jesus turns my heart. Hey! Now, when they start seeing you having stuff that you never used to have, they say, ha! But, what is the name of your church? I'm seeing some changes here. What is the name of your church? I think I want to join. I want to go. Can I meet your bishop? You see, I need this. Because what's happening, things that you never used to have, you start acquiring them because grace is causing you to be saved in other areas of your life. You and your friends have been part of no man club. You know that club. You're all part of that club. No good man club. All of a sudden, hey, all of a sudden, they see you, you resign from the club. Shafa Vavas. Hey. You resign from the club. All of a sudden, they see you, you are soaring. And not only that, it's not that you got yourself a stray cat <laughs> on the road. But they say, hey, this is quality. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, this is what? Quality. Hey, hey, hey. Where did you get this kind of quality? Say, oh no. Say it is Catalabano. What is that? Ah, he said, you need to come to church. Say, me, I'm coming to that church. Because whatever you Catalabano, I myself need to do what? Catalabano. Jesus. Let's stand up. <laughs> Preaching finish. <laughs> hey!
I've got to prophesy. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm going to be saved. From almost to almost. <laughs> I said, I'm going from what? Almost to almost. Hey, hey. I said, from almost to almost. Hey, hey.